Hi, my name is Felipe Stefan, and I'm the Latin America Director at Luminate, a philanthropic organization that seeks to build stronger, more just, more inclusive, and more democratic societies in which everyone, regardless of who they are or where they come from, can participate in the decisions that impact their lives and the future of their communities. I am proud to support the Latinx Houses panel on Dos Estaciones, a film in this year's World Cinema Dramatic Competition at Sundance. The Latinx House is a nonprofit initiative that aims to change the image of the Latinx community by amplifying and elevating the voices and the content of Latinx artists, entertainers, policy experts, and grassroots organizers. I hope you enjoyed this panel and I hope you enjoyed this film, which pays tribute to Mexico's artisanal tequila makers. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Olga Segura. My name is Olga Segura. I'm one of the co-founders of the Latin X Cows. I'm super excited to be here uh, with uh, the director Juan Pablo Gonzalez of um, a movie that is actually in the world um, dramatic competition uh, for Sundance 2022, Dos Estaciones. Can you tell us how you started as a filmmaker and uh, you know, I, I, I'm aware that you're from Mexico, but just tell us a little bit about your history as a filmmaker. Of course, of course, I'm gonna try to make it brief. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I grew up in Jalisco, uh, in Atotonilco El Alto, a, a, a town that's about a hundred kilometers from Guadalajara. That's a pretty, pretty well-known city. Uh, and then my family moved moved to Guadalajara, we all moved to Guadalajara uh, when I was in middle school. And then um, I actually, I went, I started communications in college and then I, you know, I was very interested in, in film, music and literature. Um, and then I actually, um, when I started, when I, you know, when I decided I wanted to make film, I, uh, I decided I wanted to come here and study and I um, applied to the University of Texas in, in Austin. Like that was the only program I applied <laughs> in the, which is interesting. Now that I think back on it, I'm like, oh, wow, that's, a, that's an interesting choice, single choice. And then um, they have a really interesting program because they do both. Um, they're very committed to nonfiction documentary work. And they're also very committed to fiction work. So it's a very interesting, it was a very interesting experience for me studying there because when I left UT, I actually left more um, being more of a, of a nonfiction filmmaker, of a documentary filmmaker. Um, and the work that I've been doing for about six years now, seven years was mostly um, nonfiction. It's, it's all based in my, that's another really important thing. It's all based in my hometown in Atotonilgo. I, I make all my work or all my films there. Um, and I was, I started working on Dos Estaciones actually as I was making uh, all this documentary work. And a lot of the documentary work was actually informing um, the film. It was, it was informing a lot of the script. And uh, there are actually a lot of parallels between um, Dos Estaciones and, and the documentary work in, in terms of locations, in terms of characters, you know, a lot of, a lot of things repeat. Um, but yeah, obviously it's been really interesting now to, um, I mean, first to be part of Sundance, second to have, to be just about, you know, taking a fiction film into the world, which is a, is a very different experience from, from what I had done before. So I'm very excited and um, yeah, I'm just yeah, grateful that, that the film is, is, gonna be, is gonna be shown at uh, such an important place. What a great way to start as a feature <laughs> script or director. Um, I'm so happy that you explained a little bit of your background as a filmmaker. It's really important, uh, the documentary background that you have in this movie. Well, let's start with the casting of it. You know, I think it's, that's extremely important. You, you did Maria, it's just incredible. I wanna know 
how did you find her? And you just explained that the process of your other films were already involved in those estaciones. So I'm sure that Maria came up in one of those many two great documentaries that you did, or I don't know, I wanna, I wonder, not just Maria, the whole town, the characters, is just so real feels like it is a documentary, right? Mm -hmm. And and has that very day all over, you know, from the beginning till the end. And that is uh, what I I really appreciate from your filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Um, As a producer, I really got connected to the characters. Talk to me a little bit about that process. Yeah, that's really nice to to hear, Olga. Thank you. Uh, Well, Maria, talking first about, about uh, Teresa Sanchez, the actress, um, and her character. Uh, I met Teresa because she's actually a, a pretty well-known art uh, actor in Mexico, right? Um, this is kind of her first uh, lead role. You know, her first the the first film that she does as as as, as a as a lead uh, lead actress, and uh, but she's. You know, she's she's done a lot of uh, film work and theater work in Mexico, and I'd always found her acting incredible. I always thought she was very extremely unique and so versatile in what she what she was able to do. Um, and I actually worked with her in in a short film I did in 2016 um, when I was in school. Um, and Teresa is just, you know, the most generous person and she is so in- incredibly talented. She also lives very close to my hometown. She lives in Morelia. So the way, so I was thinking about this film, you know, I've been thinking about, I, I had been thinking about this film, about this character in particular, about making a film about um, a, ca- a character involved in the tequila business, uh, but I couldn't really you know i sort of it, it was difficult for me to to develop it because my work as as you mentioned is so grounded in in reality and and in real you know and in people that that exist so when i thought about tere for the um, for for the lead role i thought like okay what i have to do is i have to bring tere to atotonilco and i have to start shooting things with her before i can actually build this character and that's how we did it. You know, we, every year we would go at least bef- since, you know, from 2017 up to 2020, we would go every year with her to Atotonilco and shoot things and shoot as we were writing and write as we were shooting. Uh, and then there was a moment where we actually shot, you know, the entire film, um, like all the sort of scripted elements of the film in 2020. but informed by all of this previous process that we had we have done with her and uh, and all of the rest of the characters are real no those moments that you were able to film prior 2020 uh did they make the cut for the movie some things yeah yeah you you a, a few things that you see in the film were shot previous you know were were previously shot uh um yeah yeah and also because you know also the for us also the editing process was almost like, it was also as if we're shooting a, a documentary, you know, and, and just yeah. to explain a little bit about that, it was basically, we shot the film, bef- we shot the film, we threw out all the writing about the film, you know, like all the writing that we did previously, we didn't reference that at all in the editing. So that's, you know, that's basically how you construct also a nonfiction film, a documentary. Um, so I think there's also, I don't know, it's just all these process, it, it's, a, it's a scripted fiction film, but all the process actually looked more like, um, like a nonfiction process, which was something I, you know, which is something I feel very comfortable with. Um, and also, you know, talking about the rest of the characters, as, as, as you were mentioning before, uh, most of them, you know, this is their, this is a real life, right? Like the thing is, is, you know, that's, that's her real life. And, and Rafaela is actually the administrator of that factory. And Jose Luis is actually, you know, uh, the, the, the actor that plays Cirilo is actually um, the, the in- main engineer of that factory. And we just had Tere and then Manuel Garcia Rulfo as, as actors. 
that's the reason why I went to that first question because even when you know, even when when they meet for the first time, Rafaela and Maria, you can, I was like the first thought, I was like, I wonder if she's actually doing that job. So I was really blown away for that. And then that gave me the thought of like, well, I wonder if if that was a combination that the filmmaker did. Yeah, and also because the language, I mean, you know, we're, we were talking before we're Mexican, we speak Spanish, you know, you, you, you like the, the language that she, that she uses is very specific. Right. Um, and the thing that the, the way we, we constructed that it was that before, before the shoot, we had about a month where we, we created this space for everyone to come up with their sort of own language for the film, right? Like their own kind of textual language in a way that then became verbal language, but it's basically all the dialogues were rewritten by, 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 by everybody, you know, including, including Teresa. Um, and it was a very collaborative process. Um, that's something that was, I don't know, for me, it was really, really important. And, yeah, it, it was really magical, but it also ma just made the whole process so, so comfortable in a way. I don't know. Yeah, uh, no, I, yeah. you know, you feel it. I want to talk about your cinematographer because I think it's just very uh, beautiful. And I love those moments where you really let like the audience connect with the character. It's really interesting because, you know, my cinematographer is Gerardo Guerra. He's a really dear friend of mine. I've known him for almost 20 years now. And, um, and we, you know, it's his first fiction film, I should say. It's like, it's like his first feature fiction film. And then after our film, actually, he, he wrapped our film and went straight into doing his second fic fiction film, which was which is really great, uh, I think. And anyway, but um, we, so the, the, the process of, of, of kind of, you know, creating this, the, the visual language of the film, um, work, working with the images of the film, let's say, uh, and sort of the formal aspects of the film was also very kind of process-based. It was almost like doing research. Um, and again, very similar to how, my previous, you know, I had been working in, in, in my previous films. Be, you know, we started, we started working together, Gerardo and I on the film, in, again, in 2017. It was the same, so the same team, you know, the producers, Jamie Gonzalez, uh, Ilana Coleman, um, Bruna Haddad, like McKenna, we, you know, we started all working at the same time in 2017. Um, shooting together and we uh, you know as we were sort of yeah shooting these documentary elements of the film and rehearsing things with Teresa and rehearsing things with Tatin and rehearsing things with Rafaela of course we were also constructing the the the, the kind of the, yeah the visual aspects of the film especially for me it was very important that all that process was very important because I was very you know, I was naturally kind of apprehensive about the, the the fictionalized moments, right? Like I was very confident and comfortable shooting anything that that wasn't scripted and anything that was sort of real, right? Um, and and more documentary like, but all the moments that were more controlled, that were lit, etc. I was, you know, I I felt like I really needed to work with Gerardo to 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 construct something that worked for us. No? Um, and I think, you know, there was a really interesting, I feel, combination between his experience, a, you know, as a, as a cinematographer, as a, as a kind of yeah, professional cinematographer, his experience with lighting, and my interest in, in the real. No? It was kind of like, I, th I feel like that, um, that encounter was really fruitful for us, uh, but but it you know it it needed a lot of work and and we did a lot of work and now you know I feel like I could do another three films with him and he would just understand exactly what I what I'd be looking for. You know? 
but how do you actually pitch it to Teresa? <laughs> um, you know, it's I'm I'm I, again I'm I'm from I'm from this town. Uh, um, there is. I, you know, I don't want to go too deep into into the history of the town because I'm so I'm so invested in it that I you know I I I, I could talk for 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 too long maybe about it. But um, you know, Maria's character, uh, I I I I feel I believe is part of a generation uh, of of people in this town um, that were born in the fifties and the and the sixties um, that. Um, inherited these um, these very traditional businesses, right? Um, tequila businesses, and um, you could say that um, before, bef you know, before these 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 businesses weren't weren't really businesses as we know them now. You know, these these transnational uh, products, you know, that that travel everywhere. They were uh, they were very local. Um, they were very regional. My father, my grandfather, um, was was a tequila producer, and he, I mean, you know, a pretty. He was an artisan, really, you know, and he would he would sell his tequila in the region. And the farther his tequila would go, it was. I mean, if he could get to Guadalajara, it would get to Guadalajara by boat through the Lago de Chapala. So it's like. It's a very, very, very different world from you know an idea of that business of you know what we know today, and Maria, I feel like it's part of a generation that inherited these these um, these artisanal uh, small businesses and then made it into a really big um, and into a big company, you know, and and with the capacity sort of becoming. Uh, a, let's say a global company, no, and I feel like you know this was when this was happening, right? When this was happening in the eighties and nineties, um, of course, many big uh, European and North American corporations got interested in this business. I mean, they got interested since the fifties, but you know. Um, so anyway, um, I feel like then what happened to people like Maria is they, you know, in a way they got a little bit. Um, I don't want to say trapped, but they they were sort of in the middle of this of this tradition and this very very modern world that was very global, very transnational, and very huge, very big. You know, and in a way, some of these companies were were um, absorbed, were were consumed by this by this this corporate world, you know. And to me, on a human and existential level, that is very interesting. Uh, more so, you know, that the business part or whatever, you know, you can sense in the, the film. It's more about her existence and her sort of just resistance and and questioning of of you know what what it means for a person like her to exist in this world. And that's something I, I ask myself about. It's like I'm part, you know, I'm part of, and I grew up in this town, and I see, you know, these, you know, all these, all kinds of people in my town, of course. Like, and, and you can experience that in the film, but but precisely a character like Maria was so interesting, interesting to me because I thought that it would, it, it actually spoke to a very sort of. Um, it's, it's sort of a very global and not just global idea of 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 of, uh, of a character, but also it's kind of like a it's it's almost like a traditional uh, tragedy in a way. I don't know, but then that's happening in this very particular place that I know very well that has its own specificity. And to me, that was just that was, I just needed to tell that story, if that makes sense like we said before, it's sort of this clash between the traditional and the modern. And that you can, you can, uh, como lo puedes transpolar a cual, to anything, no? And anything that anyone is, has experienced in the past 50 years or, or 80 years, no? I really want to talk about the making. You know, you said that you started in 2020, but you started like filming before that. I want people at uh, our audience at Sundance um, to understand how difficult it is for us. You got the support from Imcine, which is, you know, 
you're very lucky, but not every single filmmaker gets that opportunity. That's actually a great advantage, but also it's not everything because it's not like a lot of money where you can actually make a movie. Yeah, no, so, definitely. I mean, not, and, and probably your salary is going to be, it's definitely not going to be what you would need to, to live for the five, six years that you're making a film, no? Correct. So I want to talk a little bit about that. That's why it, for you guys, it's a double accomplishment for us to get into these festivals. It's like, wow, I'm, I, I really want you to understand, Juan Pablo, how happy we are in our community here at the Latinx House, me as a Mexican, you representing us. Up, it's huge. So bravo to you and bravo for every single effort that you had to do in order to make this movie happen, but also not to uh, stop making this movie uh, because of all the obstacles and financial problems. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, it's really, it's, it's, it's hard to make a film and I think it's, it's hard for, for everyone, you know, in anything, um, any topic you're, you're working on, it's pretty hard. We, we had, I, I feel like, you know, or at, or at least through the process, I felt like we had the challenge of uh, making a film that um, was set in, in, in a town that is also kind of obscure in a way, you know, obscure in the sense that like, no, you know, nobody had made films here and, and, you know, the films, the films also maybe don't talk about some of the particular topics that um, usually get funding out, you know, in Mexico and outside of Mexico. That doesn't mean, you know, that there's not, there are not other films like mine getting funded like that, you know, th there are films like, like, like my films getting funded. Um, but it is also, you know, you, you said like, how did you pitch the film? I think, you know, that was, that was a challenge, even though we were incredibly lucky and we were able to raise, uh, uh, money in Mexico and France and in the US, um, it took a lot of effort and a lot of conversations and a lot of rewriting and rewriting and rewriting of the script and and having people read the script and um, and you know I wrote I don't know how many director statements for different grants and and different funds and got hundreds of rejections. Um, I mean, you know, you like you collect rejections <laughs> in, when you're when you're making a film. You you just collect rejections from everything, you know, from uh, funders, uh, festivals, everybody. You know, so I think I don't know. It's it's for me. I feel like what I, what I've learned, you know, in this process and and the few films that I've that I've made before is I you know, I just know that I want to make this work. I just know that I want to make work about my hometown. Um, and, and I want to try to try to build a, a body of work that will um, represent maybe a little, you know, in some way, the, the complexity of, of a place like this, you know, that, uh, and for me, that's very important because, because it's not Mexico City, because it's not Guadalajara, because, you know, it's, it's not, um, the places that when I was growing up, I was told that uh, that deserved to, you know, to have stories be, you know, or not, or not just stories, just like narratives be happening in, in, in these places, you know, like I feel, I'm part of a generation where still everything happened in Mexico City, you know, uh, it's, it's changing very slowly, but, um, but when I was, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, even, you know, in my early 20s, the, it was just like, everything was happening there and you needed to be there if you wanted something to happen in, in, in relationship to cinema. No other arts have, uh, you know, diff have different histories in Mexico, but, um, but I, you know, I sort of learned that through this very, very hard process of making this film. I don't know how easy or difficult it would be to make my <laughs> next films, but I know that I, you know, I know what I want to do and I know that I want to keep um, keep doing this and everything else, you know, will, will come at some point or, or not. I don't know. Um, but the thing is, if you, if you focus on 
winning every grant, you know, getting into every festival, then you just, you, you can't make work because, because it's too many rejections. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I think if we're talking about the rejection in this industry, I've learned as a producer and in as an actress when I was an actress that you have to be comfortable with listening and reading and hearing and like the word no. You got to like listen maybe or get like 1 million no's in order to get a yes, right? And we have to be used to that. And um, thank you for actually being persistent, um, for being, you know, having that perseverance um, on your passion. The good thing is that you actually uh, identify your passion. Your passion was uh, to make this movie. That's why you applied to so many different grants. That's why you actually, no quitaste el dedo del renglón. You were mm -hmm. persistent, right? And this is important for the filmmakers that are watching this with us, the new filmmakers. It, it's just that identifying your passion, identifying that thing that is going to move you in order to really continue um, and, and pursuing that uh, project that you want to really, really want to make. And this is, this is what happened with you. And this is the case of uh, so many different filmmakers that actually just really do that and patience because yeah. you were patient um, on really trying to get grants and getting a piece here and a piece over here and a piece, even, like you said, France, United States, like, come on, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um, I am so happy to have this conversation with you. We're so excited. I am deeply motivated, inspired with everything that you've done with this film. Um, and uh, and we're going to be continue like following. Uh, this is a great start, Juan, Juan Pablo. This es una gran entrada. Tú como, como creador, el que estés en... En, en Sundance 20, eh, 2022 se sale, es, un, es un paso bastante grande y muchísimas felicidades. Este, no sé si quieras agregar algo en español porque pues, somos mexicanos y estamos en Latinx House, entonces hay que hablar un poquito en español, pero es, eh, quiero que me platiques tu entusiasmo de, eh, y el agradecimiento y, y de, de, de lo que traes ahorita de estar en este festival, en competencia. Sí, no, pues gracias Olga, gracias por la entrevista, gracias por to todo lo que dijiste sobre la película. Este, nada, creo que es, es, sí, estamos súper eh, felices eh, por, por la selección y por todo lo que está pasando también alrededor de la película, como que es, o sea, la selección es una parte, pero hay un montón de cosas que, que pasan detrás que son, que son muy importantes. Y, este, y nada, o sea, también, obviamente, esta película es, es, fue muy colaborativa, ¿no? Este, eh, Jamie, Lana, Bruna, Isabel, todo, todo el mundo que trabajó, Livia, la editora, el, el fotógrafo, eh, Tere, o sea, todo el mundo que trabajó en la película fue, es, 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 es bien importante y crucial para que la película pudiera suceder y, y yo, no sé, estoy muy agradecido con, todo, con todos ellos y con ustedes este, que están cubriendo la película. Y este, nada, estamos, estamos bien felices. Pues muchísimas felicidades. Espero que sea el principio de una hermosa carrera que ya lo has manifestado con, este, con esta primera ópera prima. A mí todavía no me cae que es tu ópera prima. O sea... Mm. Wow, qué fuerte, eh, qué fuerte y qué gran trabajo has hecho en tu ópera prima. Muchísimas felicidades y, y nada. I I really I'm really looking forward to meet you in person and hopefully continue supporting your movie through the whole year uh, here at the Latinx House. Uh, we um, celebrate the excellence um, in our community. Uh, thank you so much for for joining and making time to to talk with us today. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Muchísimas gracias. Nos estamos bien. And please sí. do not, do not forget that the premiere of this movie, uh, when, when is exact? Can you just tell us the date and the time so they can uh, look it up? It's Monday, uh, January 24th at 12 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time. 
Okay. Ma that's in, in important, right? Because they kept the times of the festival. So it's mountain time. But then after that, there is, uh, there is a period, like a 24 hour period where you can watch the film, I think started on the starting on the 25th. Thank you so much, Monday. Uh, please check this movie. Uh, you are up for a treat. Um, and uh, write us, write us uh, at our social media and let us know how you uh, feel. Uh, this is going to be a, a roller coaster of feelings. And you also get to know a little bit of tequila, how, um, and, and yeah, you'll learn a little bit. So, congratulations again, Juan Pablo. Uh, muchísimas gracias nuevamente. Gracias, Olga. Un abrazo. Nos vemos. Gracias. Chao.